How's it going, y'all? It's Scott Bates here with Paddle the Florida Keys. Today we're going to go over how to load your boards on your car and get them to where you're going. That's the most important thing is having them arrive safely. You don't want to lose a board on the road and you don't want to kill anybody with it. So first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we have a good roof rack with crossbars. A lot of cars come with the sidebars, but they don't have their bars that go across. So we want good crossbars and then we want to get a good pad on top of them. The padding serves to smush down a little bit and it gives a little tension to the board so you don't have to over tighten the straps. Um, this becomes really crucial when you have really nice boards or whatever. You want something that's super smushy so that you don't have to tighten the straps down so tight that you crush the board. Uh, right now we're going to be loading up these two SIC Sonic 12 sixes. They're both the same length so I'm going to take the fin out of one of them and put one down first and then I'll put the other one on top of it with a, without a fin in it. If they were different lengths you could put the shorter one on the bottom and the longer one on top. Depends on how you want to run the fins. There's a whole big debate about which way you put the fin forward, up, down, back. It doesn't matter to me. All I want to do is make sure my board gets to where I'm going. Typically I end up having the nose in the front and which means the fins in the back. I also like to have the, the top of the board up most of the time. It really depends on the board itself but uh, most of the time it ends up being with the fin down and the nose forward. So this is going to be the first board. I'll take this board and throw it right up onto the rack. I understand this is easier for me than a lot of people because I have to be pretty tall, but uh, uh, most people get a step ladder or they figure out how to do it. Go so get the first board up there. Just like that. And kind of center it up on the rack itself. And we'll go get the second board. These SICs come with a really handy dandy quick removal fin like that. Uh, you may need a screwdriver or whatever to pull your fin out. It really just depends on the fin that come with, came with your board or the fin that you're using now. Now we're just going to put the second one right on top. We're going to be kind of gentle with it. Um, these are more durable boards so I really wouldn't have to be as gentle as I would if it was my race board or whatever. If it's my race board I'm going to be a lot more careful because you don't want to scratch up the surface of the board. Um, in between the boards, I usually use some pool noodle. I like to cut the pool noodle in half. That way it doesn't roll around when you put it on top of the car. Also, if you have the, a round pool noodle, when you put, put it on your board there, the whole board will slide off if you're sitting on a slope or anything. So just cut the pool noodle. It doesn't even have to be a full, full piece. Just something to give you a little space in between the boards. And again, we're looking for something that we can squish. Next, I'm going to use my straps. I use three straps when I'm going to be going over 55. Even though today I'm not going to be going over 55, I'm going to show you the three strap method. This is how I rig it up when I'm going down the highway every time. Uh, because it's hard to do a bow line like kayakers do, if we do a third strap, and you'll see how that comes into play in a little bit, that really gives me the reassurance that my whole rack, I've seen racks come off the come off the car right off the front here not so much the factory racks I mean not so much the aftermarket racks but a lot of the factory racks I've seen come off especially as your car gets older that area could be rusted under there and you wouldn't know that your rack has been compromised um, the easiest thing I found to do is hold the heavy end the buckle in and just throw the other end over the car just like that I'm gonna get another one here now these are these are really nice these are locking straps by canoe lock They've got steel cables in them, so you can't cut them with a knife, and they actually have a, a key lock as well, but I'm just using them as regular straps right now, but I do like them if I'm going to a restaurant and I want something to make sure that it's super secure. I'm just gonna throw that in over there like that. And then we walk around the other side of the car. We're just gonna take the long end. I'm gonna pass it under the bar. We don't ever wanna go around the sidebars. We always wanna go around the crossbars. Under the bar. Back over the top, same thing with the other strap, under the bar, back over the top. Don't worry about your strap having twists in it, you actually want twists. Twists are what keep the strap from vibrating when you're driving high speeds. So if you're, if you're driving down the road and you hear a, a loud uh, buzzing noise, stop, get out of your car, undo your straps and twist it one or two more times, and then uh, put it back together. So now I got my, my heavy end here, and my tail end, I just put my tail end back under the crossbar just like that. And then all these straps work the same. We're going to come up through the bottom. All right. 
I don't like, these are called cam straps. I don't like ratchet straps because you'll over tighten your board. Cam strap, you just put it on there, pull it down nice and tight like that. Not too tight, but it's tight enough. Same thing with the other one. Just like that. Like I said, don't worry about twists. Twists are good. You don't want any twists right here. Sometimes I have to untwist it a little bit with my hand there like that. I give it a little push there like that to make sure it's good. I'll probably tighten this up just one more little bit there. That's perfect. That, that, that'll get me up to 55 miles an hour. But if I'm going to go on the interstate, the best system I've found is to take a third strap and just go right over the top of the car and leave the other end right there like that. Come right inside here like this. Throw it right through your doors. Open your doors. Don't go through the windows because then you won't be able to open the doors. Uh, most doors, most windows now have the frame around the outside. Now we got it right here. A little rock, a little rock in there. There we go. So we tighten that down right there like that. What we're doing with this strap is we're eliminating any ability for this to lift up. So we're taking out the uplift force with this strap instead of using a bow line like you would normally use on a kayak or a canoe. Then on my loose tails, as long as it's not gonna rain, I just let them go in the door like this and close it. If it's gonna rain, then you might wanna tie them up because rain can get down right in through there. All right, this is how I've tied up many, many paddle boards. I've done as many as six paddle boards this way. And uh, you, you do feel it when you're going over a bridge, but <laughs> I don't advise going more than two or three. Um, usually that's all you have in the car anyway. But uh, if you're going short distances, you know you do a downwind or whatever, throw three or four or five of them up there. Um, this, will, this will get you where you're going safely. And uh, that's about it. Uh, don't forget, paddle yourself to a better place. And paddlepaddlepaddle.com.